Allocate of Authors 2021 free event. Sign up through the library school you group. The code is on screen. Click the resources. All the information you need is in the Cavalcade of Authors 2021 folder. It's filled with many wonderful things, but what could possibly be better than chess? I'll show you what. I feel like I'm so feeling the baby by the way. things in this world, chess and bacon, but what if we combine both of those? The world is already a better place. This is a new lab, you guys. Born in 1997 in Mangora, Pakistan, Malala grew up loving school. I want to get my education and I want to become, become a doctor. But all that changed in 2008. When the Taliban came, they started about they started talking about the girls' education that girls are not allowed to go to schools and they are not allowed to, to get education. Barred from school, Malala began speaking out. My people need me and I shall raise my voice because, uh, because if I didn't uh, raise my voice now, so when will I raise my voice? A vocal advocate for girls' education, she gained international attention and with it, the wrath of the Taliban. On October 9, 2012, Taliban gunmen boarded her school bus and opened fire. He said like, then he uh, fired three, three bullets and one hit you on the left side of, uh, of, of my head. From Pakistan, Malala was airlifted to a hospital in Birmingham, England, where she made a near miraculous recovery and kept on fighting. Just a year after her attack, she wrote a best-selling memoir and created the Malala Fund to champion every girl's right to an education. Two years later, 17-year-old Malala won the Nobel Peace Prize. Despite everything, Malala has managed to maintain a sharp sense of humor. And I know what's going in your mind. <laughs> Not much. Not much. I can see I haven't heard anything yet. In, your... <laughs> in 2020, Malala celebrated her graduation from Oxford. Whatever she's doing, Malala has one goal to make the world safe for girls to learn. We have already taken many steps. Now it is time to take a leap.
What is crackalackin' Rams? Welcome back to another episode of CQC, Controversial Questions or Conspiracies. And today, unfortunately, Maddie could not join us, but we are joined by a very special guest, Jonathan Lee. Uh, he is a junior here at Rogers and a very talented musician, and I'm gonna pass it off to Max to ask him some questions. All right, we'll just get right into it with the first question. I'll leave a little bit of background here. Jonathan, as we know, you're a really good musician, uh, pretty much know everything under the sun. Um, so I wanted to ask you a few questions about what your opinions are on modern music and how music has evolved from maybe um, classical to um, 70s, 80s music up until now. So we'll start with the first one, which I feel like you might have a very unique insight on, and that's how do you feel about songs using electronically produced music and not live recorded? So you're saying it's not like a backing track, essentially. Yeah, yeah the, the background track, yeah. Well, to me, it depends on really the context of it, because like if you're someone like a DJ, of course you're going to be, because you're basically playing along with the original track. But I mean, if you're like a performing musician, like playing live instruments, then uh, that's really when the line is kind of uh, fuzzy with that because you know some people may look at it as like cheating essentially I've heard of but at the same time it can be a good way to um, keep the musicians together and in time so there's definitely both sides to that now on to the next one which I felt was real topical after the Grammys uh, a couple days ago I wanted to ask you, what's your opinion on vulgarity in music? Do you think that it has a place or do you think it's just a cheap tactic to get a hit song? Not any one song in particular that we all have in our minds, oh, but just in general here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I never really thought of vulgarity in music as getting as attention. I, I just thought of it as like, just saying whatever, just saying random stuff. But censorship is a real thing, and its censorship in music has uh, really took off ever since uh, late 80s and early 90s when metal was at its peak and rap oh, was yeah. just coming into the music scene. So, and you know, there's been a lot of cases with parents being um, concerned about what their kids are listening to and it even got to uh, the supreme court eventually um i think it was supreme court i i'm blank i don't really remember yeah, i believe you're right but, that that's the history behind like the parental advisory sticker on albums yeah that, right like, yeah like yeah. where it came from like yeah. you're saying so i guess to sum it all up i don't i never saw it as purposely getting attention mm -hmm. but um I don't really have a good answer with that. Yeah, it, it depends. Yeah, you see it as like more of like a, just an expression of art rather than purposefully trying to get yeah. a lot of attention yeah. from. Yeah. Yeah. Th that doesn't mean little kids should listen to it if they're. <laughs> yeah. There's if like their a, parents like, don't want them to. But there's a place for it all, and it's just just expression, like you were saying, Andreas. So now for the last one. This one is a pretty controversial topic, and it's. How do you feel about artists who use autotune in their songs? That's a really good question because I do have a say on this. It's not bad. <laughs> it's not in any way bad. The main trait that most people get confused with is that there's autotune and there's auto pitch. Mm. So in most cases, um, and more of like the 2000s period, Auto tune is basic is mostly most of the time used as an effect, a vocal effect. See people like T Pain using that technique to get that robotic yeah. kind of sound. And a lot of rappers are doing it today. Auto pitch is when a computer really just generates a spot on in tune note, no matter how well or bad you sing it. And the problem is it's really hard to tell. In recordings mm. probably 99 percent of musicians use it and you never notice i don't know but <laughs> it's even gotten so well that people use it live nowadays so mm. yeah uh, it's a very hard thing to uh decipher 
and that makes us question a lot is it like if you see a performance live you might start questioning is it real is it genuine or can they actually sing uh like the one time travis scott fell off the stage and screamed <laughs> 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 Not dead! That clip's, that clip's great. Um, well, Jonathan, I'd love to hear more, but we're actually out of time, and I have to kind of end it here. Um, Andreas, you want to close this out for us? Uh, yeah, thank you, Rams, for watching this uh, CQC, and thank you, Jonathan, especially, for joining us for this episode. You have a very good musical insight and uh, very talented as a musician, and we really appreciate you joining us. Thank you, guys. TKC, worst show on Ram TV. We have like the best places to take your loved one, and like we're gonna show you all about it because we, because it's just that's what we're doing, man. You look TKC. Ah! Hello, this is the fourth spot on our most romantic list um, location. Um, it is the hospital parking lot, the upper level one. And uh, as you can see, it's a little packed right now. However, at night or when the sun's just about to set, absolutely alone, and it's a beautiful sight to see. Uh, you, over there, you can see your Olympics. Beautiful. Um, and then over there are Cascades, but you can't really see them right now. But on a good day, when it's really not really cloudy, it's an absolutely a wonderful sight. Um, disclaimer. If you do come here at night, you will get kicked out. Um, no matter how many times you say your grandma is dying, they will still make you leave. So. Be responsible. Be responsible. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to it. Alright guys, so this is um, number five on our list. We're here at Bradley Lake Park. Scott, what do you think of this park, man? Um, it's a nice park. It has a nice loop. Um, you get some walking in. Um, honestly, it's a good place to take your lover if you're, if you're just trying to enjoy the scenery, you know? Just a nice little stroll. So, when you're out with your date and you don't know where to go, this is a perfect spot. This brings us to spot number three. Take a look. Some dumpsters. So beautiful. They, uh... It's a perfect spot, perfect shade, perfect sunlight, perfect cover, perfect colors. It's the perfect spot for star-crossed lovers. All right, guys, we're here at the Nathan Chapman Trail, deep in the woods. We're so deep in this forest, you can't even see the trail. You can get out into nature. I mean, it's not for everyone, for sure, but just ask, just ask your neighborhood. I don't have any service! You don't need service Help for a good time. Me. You don't need service for a good time. Life is strange. Believe me, it is true. Interview time! Alright, I'm here with local resident Kaz Horner. Kaz, uh, would you say you live here? Uh, yes, this is my bathroom. Kaz, what would you say your favorite place is to take your loved one? Uh... Chuck E. Cheese. And would you say you have a fond relationship with uh, the Chuck E. Cheese? No. Family Cup! 
And finally, number one, the Eiffel Tower. You and the lover, get that baguette and come on down to the Eiffel Tower. The city of love. Mwah, 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 mwah. Hello, RHS students. I'm your librarian, Mrs. Shelley. This is your March Book of the Month. Above All Else by Dana Allison Levy. The genre is adventure and sports fiction. Rose Keller and Tate Russo have been climbing for years, training in harsh weather and traveling all over the world. The goal that kept them going? Summiting Mount Everest, the highest point on Earth. Accompanied by Tate's dad, the two will finally make the ultimate climb at the end of their senior year. But neither Rose nor Tate are fully in the game. Not only is there a simmering romance between them, but Rose can't get her mind off of her mother's illness, while Tate constantly fails to live up to his ambitious father's standards. Everyone on their expedition has something to prove, it seems. And not everyone is making the best decisions while short on oxygen and physically and mentally exhausted. The farther up the mountain they go, the more their climbing plans unravel and the more isolated each team member becomes. Rose and Tate will have to dig deeper within themselves to determine what or who they value above all else. In a fictional tale as riveting, irresistible, and heartbreaking as Into Thin Air, teen climbing prodigies Rose and Tate attempt to summit and survive Mount Everest. You can get this book from your school library. This book is currently on display on top of the shelves at the end of the fiction section. I've circled it in the photo. How to search the library catalog for this book. Log in to Destiny. You can access Destiny through the Schoology group or through the Clever portal. Click Catalog. Type the title of the book in the search bar and press Enter. Write down the call number and the title so we can help you get the book when you come to the library for pickup. We are open Monday through Friday from 7.45 to 3. Please note that this is a new time to accommodate the hybrid schedule. I've also included a picture of the call number at the bottom. Other ways to read this book. You can download the Libby app through the company portal. This will allow you to check out eBooks from the public library to read on your PSD student device. To use the Libby app, you need a library card. Getting a library card is quick, easy, and free. Here's the link. You can also purchase this book through Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Happy reading!